Welcome back to another episode of Classroom the Elite. And as usual, a quick recap to remind myself what happened last time before the reaction. What happened last time? It was a Koenji episode. It's been a fucking long time since Koenji has done anything. And to be honest, he really hasn't really done anything still. My mother, my man is just, just filing his nails, combing his hair back, just big chilling. Immediately, we start off the episode with Ryu and visiting Class D a visit. It's kind of funny to me how Ryu just always like inserts himself into situations where nobody invited him and he just like rolls up with his entourage it's like so but every time there's a ryu in the scene he just controls the dynamic like there's some kind of like atmosphere the, the tension in the room is just so much more heightened so elevated whenever he enters a scene right i love that about ryu but he does kind of lose the grip on the command he has whenever arisu is in play we'll talk about that later Shows up, he was like, ah, what's so wrong about me, you know? Showing up to my fellow classmates in this wonderful school where we all love each other. Bullshit. Koenji immediately leaves. Koenji's like, I don't got time for this shit. I have a date. Be gone, peasants. And he walks out. So I guess, I'm not sure when Ryuin started suspecting Koenji or if the fact that Koenji's just like getting up to leave was enough of a, a, a flag to chase him. But I guess he did have his suspicions about Koenji. Koenji to everybody else... In Class D, everybody knows he's just a selfish asshole, right? Like, I, I I love him. He's my favorite character. But come on, he is a selfish asshole when it comes to group dynamics. And he's, from the beginning, he's told us exactly who he was in Episode 1. Immediately, we got on the bus. What does he do? Fuck you, old lady. You're standing. I'm sitting down here. Why? Because I don't give a shit about society. I'm going to do what's best for me and nothing else, right? He's He, he told us what he's about. So it's like, come on. You know what you're going to get, right? He leaves. Ryuan chases him. And again, like, to him, what would Koenji be like? Does Koenji seem like the mastermind type? Maybe. He seems incredibly competent. Like, his academic scores, he's always in the top. Athletics, he's clearly athletic, but he doesn't really show it. Would a mastermind like him... Would, it, would, would the mastermind that Ryuan has in his, his idealized image of the mastermind be willing to kind of put himself out there like how Koenji bit, does a bit? He doesn't really stand out that much though. He is always just like kind of out of the scene. So maybe he is a prime candidate to be suspicious about. I mean, if I was Ryuin, I'd be suspicious about Koenji. Like he's, he seems really, you know, competent when it comes down to it. It's just that he doesn't participate. He leaves. Ryuin orders the boys to follow him. And not a single moment was there that Koenji loses confidence. There might have been a little bit of a little frowny face, right? When, when Ryuin dropped his mirror before... Koenji made Ryu and hold this mirror for him and call him. I think Ryu was just playing along with it, but I thought that was the funniest part. But not a single time did Koenji ever, ever break his poker face. I'm not sure if it's a poker face. Maybe he truly does just feel like he's above everyone else. I wouldn't doubt it. And he's smiling the entire time. He feels as if he, it's like 1v, I don't even know, like 1v. I can't count how many Class C there are, but there's a lot of them. We have some Class D members in the back, but it's like fucking Susan Day and them. Like, what, what are they going to do? Help us fight? Like, no, they can't do shit, man. They're going to be like, hey, you, you better not do this. Or what? It's like, ah, ah, I'll call Manabu maybe. I, I don't know. But Koenji, not a for a second did he falter. His pride matches his confidence. Is this egotistical? Is, is he being egotistical? Yes. But if he has... The competent, if he has the talent to back up such ego, is it fake? I don't think so. That's the amazing thing about Koenji. He can show up and step up when he needs to. It's just that he never does when we need it. It's just whenever he needs it. The entire dialogue of the conversation between Ryuin and Koenji is just pretty much just like, so you're kind of sus. What do you do? And Koenji's like, ah, nothing. I just, I'm, I got, I got a date. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on. Are you, are you done with the time? What are you, what are you asking me? fucking makes him hold the mirror as he's combing his hair and apparently in the light novel there's many scenes where the 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 dialogue kind of ends with and he combed his hair i'm like that's that's the funniest shit and he combed his hair <laughs> it's, it's it's a nonsense line but like if, if you know the context behind it about how koenji loves combing his hair with his mirror right it's it's pretty funny not did, i don't think Rewin completely thought koenji was ever a suspect he's just going there just to entertain him i guess makes him hold his mirror he holds it. Cohen just combing his hair back saying, come on, boy, you, 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 you can't, you really think I'm the mastermind? You think I give a shit about Class D? I don't give a fuck. And why doesn't Koenji care? This is as, I've never really 
we haven't got any backstory of Koenji. We don't know anything about him other than he just doesn't want to participate in society. We do know that I guess he's super rich. So I guess all he has to do is just kind of just fuck around at school. Doesn't matter what ranking he gets. He can just graduate in class D for he, all he cares. As long as he graduates, he just kind of en enjoys his dates. And then he just joins his family business. Maybe his family is just fucking... I mean, I'm sure they're all doing fine. But everyone else is trying really hard to, you know, stay on top of the class and just promote. Coin just doesn't give a fuck. I guess he's got his own endgame that, you know, everything's already just settled for him. So maybe, maybe that's why he has just no stake in anything. Ryuin can't get anything out of Koenji. In fact, by the time we're done talking, Arisu shows up. Arisu from Class A. Arisu plus the blonde guy. But remember, I, I think I mentioned during the episode that, um... Is he the other figurehead? Because there was the line of, um, there's two figureheads in Class A that kind of rules things. I, 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 I knew that, you know, Baldi was doing his thing from the previous season too. But I thought maybe the blonde guy is more important than the Baldi. Bald, the blonde guy that seems to be around Arisu all the time. Arisu is always in like an entourage, the same as Ryuin. And think about this. The craziest thing is like, so Koenji leaves. Also, before we can do that, Ryuin shows up uninvited. Everyone's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Koenji leaves, Ryuin follows up. They're talking. Class D shows up. And then Aris everybody just fucking here. Arisu shows up with Class A. Like, she got her three cronies. And it's like, the fuck? Did you guys all plan this? Like... Does Arisu, does she have, she keeps saying it's a convenience. Oh, uh, oh, are you planning Christmas parties? Like, uh, join, let me join in on the conversation, right? She also has, and we've known this from like the previous seasons. She's like uh, physically disabled. She always has like a walking crutch. She has a bad leg, I guess. That's why she was exempt from the, uh, the boat, no, the island arc, right? I'm not sure what that is. Maybe she got an injury when she was a kid. Clearly Ryuan didn't do anything to her before, right? There's no fucking way, right? Honestly, if Ryuin was the one that broke Arisu's leg or something a long time ago, and Arisu's still able to kind of like bicker at Ryuin like this, acting like she's above Ryuin, all credit to her, but I don't think that's the case. I've never seen Ryuin break his like um level of confidence, his his like whenever he talks to Susan, he's just like grabbing her hair and like sniffing and like oh Susan, and she's he, he just always just so confident. He's just always grinning. He's always looking at people's reactions. And he's the one trying to spot for if people are, you know, making a face or not. It's not the case when Arisu is seen. Anytime there's Arisu, even in season one that I remember, now that I think about it, anytime Arisu is in play around Ryuin, Ryuin is the one that looks like he's pissed off. He's the Suzune in this example when Suzune, when Ryuin is visiting Suzune, right? Arisu just has something over Ryuin. I don't know what it is. I don't know what makes Ryuin so pissed off other than the fact that we call him Dragon Boy. Dragon Boy. I saw this in the comment section before in the previous season reactions. You guys are like, I can't wait for that Dragon Boy scene. I'm like, huh? The fuck is that? Not really spoilers. It's more of this is like a thing that makes me excited and anticipated for what Koji might do. Because you guys are like, there's that Dragon Boy scene. I'm like, hmm? Right? Dragon Boy. At the, at the moment of the reaction, I didn't think like, what does Drag? how does Dragon relate to Ryuin? Just, okay, is Ryuin like a Yakuza member? Therefore, he might have like dragon tattoos and we're kind of making fun of him because maybe he's a fake Yakuza. Maybe he's just like a phony and that's what we're calling Dragon Boy. No, it's as simple as Ryu means dragon in Japanese, right? So it makes sense. Koenji, again, kind of employing the the, the uh, Donald Trump tactic of branding people with nicknames. Like, little bro. What's up, little bro? Or like, dragon boy. Donald Trump, uh, uh. Say, say what you will about him. He his tactics when he's like talking to people, when he's like discrediting people, the way that he can just like quickly put a nickname on somebody and continue to shit on them like that, it's actually like insane like strategy. Addison picks up on that. He's like, Dragon Boy, I, I'm, I'm gonna call you Dragon Boy from now on. Ryuin actually says, if you say that one more time, I'm gonna kill you. And I'm like, this is not a show in an anime. What the fuck are you talking about? We're in like a school setting. We're just chill. sometimes we're violence about what you mean. You're gonna actually kick. He fucking dumps. There's like a fucking somersault. Tries to kick out. He's like, what? He took the bait. I think. I wonder if Class D. I wonder. I don't know if you're watching the entire thing, right? I hope that people took notice of how pissed off he gets whenever Aris is around. The Dragon Boy. It did get to Ryu. As soon as he heard that, he fucking. His, his face a little bit shattered. Koenji is so good. He's so confident. And because he truly believes he's just like above everyone else, that's where all this confidence exudes from. Apparently, before, I mean, 
uh, about the Dragon Boy scene, apparently he also shit on Arisu in the light novel, and there was a lot of scenes, extra scenes in the light novel that was left out in the anime. And this is where ignorance's bliss line comes in true, because I, as an anime only, I'm just fucking popping up with like, oh my god, it Koenji scenes, right? But for like the light novel viewers, if you know what should be in there, all the really good shit that's been cut out, I'd be pissed off too, yeah? But that's the thing about reacting, baby. I don't read manga or, you know, read the source material anymore because I'm just saving it for the anime reaction. If that's the case, even if the anime might be bad, at the moment, that's all I got to compare it with. So I'm like, shit, this is fucking good. But I wish that I saw... There, apparently, there was like a... There was Dragon Boy and there was a little girl, but then he would probably say like, Lituru Goru or something like that, right? That would be pretty fun to see, but we didn't get that from Koenji. Kiko Angie just walks off into the distance saying, I'm not the mastermind, I'm just fucking crazy. And Ryun's like, yeah, I think he's just fucking crazy. I, he has nothing to do with this. He's got nothing to do with this. All right, well, you can go. So that means this is all the Koenji we're going to get out of this season. I mean, this is already like episode 12 now. Is this the finale? Or is there one more episode? I actually don't know, but... It is what it is. Koenji is a very rare commodity, meaning it's, it's, it's very scarce. We want more of him, but... I guess that's why he's special. If, if they kept giving us Koenji students, would he be as special? I don't think so because he's so mysterious and interesting, but they're really saving him. I just want more of Koenji, man. Anytime he shows up, it just gets me fucking popping off. I don't know if Koenji did witness the entire dialogue, but again, he's out of the game. He doesn't give a shit. He's trying to lay low because... And I don't know why, other than him trying to protect his freedom, trying to not get caught, the more he gets involved in this game, the more likely some shit could happen where, I don't know, his dad could intervene and get him expelled or something, right? So I guess to him, rather than getting to classes as fast as he can, I mean, he already got the framework set up. Everything's kind of working as intended. He can just kind of back off, put the gas off the pedal, and then just pedal off the gas. Is it gas off the pedal or pedal off the gas? Foot off the pedal. What am I talking about? You put the foot on the pedal, so then it... Anyways, he's just chilling. And it's kind of sad because K gets fucked up. We'll get to that in just a bit. I just wanted to cover Ryuin just like reminiscing about his first love. And it wasn't explicitly told to us what his first love was. Apparently, according to the comment section, and clearly who would lie on the internet, right? Some of you guys said um, his first love re re uh, relates to a scene where he, as a child, killed a snake. <laughs> like, what? His first love relates to him killing a snake. So I guess the... I don't know, but he compares that. He compares the thrill of mind gaming with Aonokoji. He doesn't know he's Aonokoji, but he's comparing the thrill of Aonokoji, right? Playing all these mind games akin to first love. That's how he felt back then. And I'm like, you can't fucking make this shit up. I know that people are like, Ryuin's best girl. Oh my god, Kiyo K is over. No, it's Ryuin and Aonokoji, man. I mean, when you give a shit like this, how can I not meme about it, right? It's actually so funny how he just keeps texting Anakoji and Anakoji keeps texting him back, but no text to K. It's over and we gotta delete all evidence too. Apparently, Anakoji, um, Ryuin did text to Anakoji letting him know like, um, because he set out two baits, right? So we got K and then we have, you know, Anakoji as well. And if Anakoji doesn't show up, well, K's gonna get crushed and he's like, fuck it. It is what it is, man. Anakoji knows this is happening. He got the text. He knows this is happening. Motherfucker is going on karaoke with the with, with the study group while K is getting waterboarded. And I'm like, yeah. I I thought that maybe in like a the hero arrives late, so Anakoji might show up at the very end and be like, ha, huh, you know what? I'll have to disclose my identity as the mastermind, but for the sake of saving my girl, I'll do it as a hero. But it's like, nah, he's fucking going karaoke. K is not getting saved. He's actually not going to get saved at this rate, right? We're, she's already gotten waterboarded. Now, uh, she fucking... Uh, Ryuin took out a knife, and I guess... I thought for a second that he was... He took out the knife to, I don't know, like... Dig it deeper into her old wound below her new kids. But apparently it was just to cut off her uh, handcuffs. But at this rate... So there was two outcomes, right? Either someone comes, saves K, which I thought would be Anakoji. I guess it's not happening. And if not... She fucking just... Just endures all this says nothing doesn't snitch doesn't snitch once hasn't said a single thing and life just goes on as if nothing happened the fuck if this is the case if k actually she, we know she won't snitch but if she endures all this and no one comes to save her then that's just like i understand even more why she is such a life character she's loyal 
she's so loyal and if you compare her character her personality someone also mentioned like hey did you think about how k is kind of like changing or developed from like the past person who she used to be where i don't know she might get bullied and she might i don't know give out information just as easily versus now where she's protecting everything for the sake of anakoji right this is major development for k she's not saying anything even with all the bullying trauma and all that past ptsd no she's holding her grounds for whoa for what for out of you fucking going karaoke like what the fuck dude so he really just in terms of his like logic he's saying yeah he might get fucked up yeah albert might break her leg in half but if that means that i i stay safe as the mastermind and i'm just laying back again when i'm not in this game anymore so be it that's his mindset right now where the fuck is the key okay ship coming from there is every single bit of interest and romantic intent towards anakoji is directly from k to anakoji and nothing back right there's nothing from anakoji to k so i thought maybe in this one instance where k is getting waterboarded and tortured anakoji might save her and that might rekindle their the fire, the, the fire of love between them, not that it ever existed, it was only one way, but maybe Anokuji would finally be like, you know what, I have to protect this girl, I promised that I would. I said that, I, I, I said that I'm going to step out the game and I'm, I'm done with this, but maybe because I have to step in, now my identity is disclosed as a mastermind, I have no choice other than to basically just play the game now, right? I thought that might be what's happening, but no, nah, he's like, I don't, I don't go fucking go play karaoke, man, ask Koenji for help or some shit. Now, can someone else save k in this instance maybe now let's now let's think maybe i don't know does understand that k needs to be saved but he himself can't do it himself because again he's the mastermind and if he gets invited over it's kind of like oh so you are the mastermind because i texted two people and only one person would know does he send somebody else and they save who the fuck can beat Ryun's authority in this fucking like just like undisclosed location in the shacks right like albert's there too man it's like and same with ibuki she can fight too i i i i think that k might just endure all this and that's it and that's how we understand that she's so fucking loyal and that's why her popularity as the gay girl character in, in the series is so fucking high even to this most recent light novel volume i don't know maybe it's kind of brutal but gotta find out in today's episode let's watch why did Manabe's gang show up? Because the masterminds. Yeah. Diana Koji set her up. So that. No, no, no. Set her up so that we could take a video of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly what he did. I know she won't do it. I know she won't do it. Oh, I'll never tell you. I kind of wanted to say EK. What? Pseudo. Pseudo's the mastermind. Define destroy. He keeps saying, I'll crush you. But what does that really mean? You're going to kick her? Like, Arisu? Like. No, you are beyond cool right now. No, you did so well. Dude, poor K, man. It was actually fun for her. She felt like she's getting included. She felt like, you know, she's plotting together, but... Why did you abandon her, dude? <laughs> but the truth is what? He would save you, but... Different circumstances happened! Bro, what are you fucking doing? Bro, what are you doing? Hanging out with fucking Sakura right now, is that okay? Cause you know something's up! Isn't it a little bit too late though? Wait, wait, wait. Oh? He's... Oh? It's feeling a little guilty maybe? He's feeling a little guilty? Okay, here's Albert. Just looking G, top G as usual. Fucking Albert, man. I actually love him. I love Albert. I wish he got more lines. He only says, you got it, boss. Okay, boss. That's about it. He's speaking English to Albert? <laughs> okay, so how do we... The umbrella's out. I wonder if that's supposed to signify anything. But, like, if we show up, how do we convince him I'm not the mastermind? I'm sure he has it. I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure he's... I thought he was in a teacher room, but he's calling himself... The mastermind has shown up, but do you believe? Midibuki is like, what is this NPC motherfucker doing here? What? Again, Anakoji completely full Dibuki. He showed up? Yeah, your hero saved up! A little late, I'd say, but... Mm -hmm. 
how is he gonna play this out? This is gonna be so interesting. Because I'm not the mastermind. That I protect you. Oh, he's saying the exact lines that put doubt in our heart. You dumbass. You didn't suspect him. <laughs> you never suspected me, you fucking idiot. I fucking played you all, dumbass. Dude. Oh my god, I got played so hard than that fifth finale, man. But Ibuki, oh, the audacity Ibuki says, right, has to fucking say that. I mean, you gotta fight off Albert too, man. Ibuki's a good fighter. I don't know who this guy is, but sure, I'm sure he's drunk too. Oh, dude, come on. That's the first time he kind of got physical with her, other than holding her hair up. That, that was the kick. But I feel like Aonokoji has some level of violence too, man. You say absolute violence as if Aonokoji himself can't match you in that regard. Oh man, this is gonna be so good. This is gonna be so fucking good. Hmm? <laughs> Somebody call the ambulance! But it's not for me! <laughs> No, it's not it was stop me. It's 1v4. Koenji kind of said the same thing before too. He said, I'll crush you fucking all, but all right, let's see. Let's see. We haven't seen Anokoji actually fight though. We've only seen him dodge mana with attack. Block. Uh armbar. Dislocate his shoulder. Uh quick knee to the Albert versus Anokoji. They're bo Albert's boxing. Yeah, I'm just like, what the? But, 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 but if, if we, if we, if we, we have to show him the skills right now. But I, I don't know what Anakuji's intention is to ha to hide his identity. He's like, holy fuck, he can fight. I knew she knew he was special. Oh my god, Albert down! Did you see that fucking calligraphy? <laughs> You're not gonna come on. I mean, you can got the martial arts too, I guess. I, I'm just looking down on her because you know it's fucking Albert, dude. He took down Albert. He didn't go to bed. The classic fucking chop on the neck to knock somebody out. Where did he learn? The white room, probably. The white room teaches martial arts like this. This is not piano and calligraphy, dude. What the fuck? Reviewing, can you fight him on equal terms though? Are you a good fighter? Because so far you've let kind of let Albert do things for you. It's seemingly pretty one sided already. I think you're done. Not bad, little bro, but I want him to call him Dragon Boy, man. Oh, it makes my heart beat. Doki Doki. Oh, God, he's got a ladder. I'm sure Ryuan can play dirty, right? That's what he's going to do. Also, he hasn't pulled out his weapon yet. Yo, look at the quick fucking just pop, pop, pop that Ionokoji puts in. It's so... Like, he strikes so quickly. This is... I'm not gonna attempt to art reason as to what martial arts style this is. I don't fucking know about fighting, man. But you can see how he just... Like... <laughs> Again, I said 1v4. Call an ambulance, but not for me. Yo, you guys, please call four ambulance. We need four ambulances on the way. <laughs> yeah, one, two, three, four, yo. Yeah. That's from Bleach, I think, where Ichigo did that, but... So why don't we end this right now, then? Oh! This is seemingly kind of impossible. Uh, this is kind of bad, isn't it? He's got... I feel like this is a prime position for Anakos to get his, like, arm dislocated. Ryu and backstory! Ryu had probably, like, a the snake that he killed. He's probably smiling and just laughing. Watch his face. He's probably smiling. He's like, oh, yes, this is what it means to live. Mm, no smile yet. Oh, there it is. There it is. Fucking uh, kids that kill animals is usually first signs of like a serial killer. But then again, it's a snake, a animal, it's a reptile. It's a different argument. But why don't you let me experience pain? Can you do it? He's just taking the hits. No, no, and he's blocking every one of them. No, no, no. Okay, okay no, 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 no. He's blocking every one of them, wasn't he? Okay, grab the fucking ladder, hit him in the back of the head. 
I don't think he landed a single hit to his face or his body, though. I feel like he really blocked everything there. I don't feel fear. I want him to instill fear on Ryuin. I still don't feel anything. Honestly, I think it's tr what he's saying is true. Oh, pfft. The fuck off. See how quick his hands are? How many times are we going to have to fuck him up? He's not going to give up, though. Unless we really knock him out. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh. He's on ground pound right now. Wait. This isn't the scene from the trailer, is it? No, 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 no. The trailer was more bright and it was like outside. There was a scene in the trailer where Aarakuji was like about in the same kind of position just punching on the ground. Was this from the trailer? Is this the scene or is it different? I don't think he feels anything though. I don't think... No, he feels nothing. I don't know. I want to know what Aarakuji is feeling, but... He doesn't have emotion it seems like, unless it's all just bottled up. What, what? What's the face he's making right now? Aonokoji, what's the face? Nothing. <laughs> Feels fucking nothing! Everyone's like, what the fuck is this guy? <laughs> this is just casual 50 punches to the face to me, Aonokoji. And Ryuan's like, come on, show me that face of despair. I will come back one. Yeah, There's a lot of fucking blood. Ryuan, are you going to start crying? He's... Oh my god, this is kind of... Oh, that's a nice face you're making. Mm, show me that face of fear right now. It's not oh well, the last one was a fucking hammer fist. That wasn't like a mm, that was like a mm. Is this gonna be enough to make him quit from now on whenever it goes against I don't know, You two have the capacity for Yeah, he because he said I I'm gonna instill fear into you until you'll never be able to pose me again, right? Oh, this poor girl. Poor girl. Hey, but it's it's a happy ending though! You're a new person. All that character development is because I made the situation where you have to be waterboarded, but you changed as the person, okay? Good, good. <laughs> yeah? That he didn't break his promise? I'll, I'll, I'll save you. That's all you gotta say, man. Oh, he's, I mean, he, he was in all the entire time, but he really did mean it when he said that he would come save her. I pretty much gave up on that. What do you mean this will do? To... What do you mean this will do? As in like, this is enough to tell Kate right now to make her emotionally still like, um, I, I don't know, bound to me? What was the... Or, or, or this will do as in, like, this situation has been diffused correctly. I've taken out everybody from class C and K is safe. This will do? Or was the this will do something more sinister as in, okay, I told her that I save her. She's believing me. Great. He's gonna be a better person now. Amazing. Better pawn for me in the future. Next. Is that that kind of this will do? Man. Best episode. Without a doubt. Without without a fucking doubt. This is the best episode. The piano and calligraphy skills that we've been hinted. The tease that. Since when? Like season one? Like episode like fucking three or something? When Manabu tried to like palm strike Suzune? <laughs> and then Ayanukoji had to stop that shit? Man. Man. What a fucking... All the fight scenes were so crisp. Although, one thing that is kind of annoying is the the, the overall, like... It was too dark, right? I, I, I get it. We're in, like, a little isolated area and there's not much light. But, like, oh, could you imagine if it was more colorful? Like, if it was a little bit more bright? The fight scenes were really cool. Maybe there is that aesthetic, too, where because it's dark and you see the quick motions happening, it's more, I don't know, seems more fluid, but I felt like some scenes I couldn't see as much, but all the scenes I did need to see, I fucking saw it. I don't know if fucking just, just fucking fast with the hands, man, like, and, like, the, I don't, I don't even know what's most, like, I, I knew he was strong based off of the grip strength thing that, you know, we did before the sports festival, I knew we could fight, and we knew that, like, he must be quite athletic to regard, but to take out Albert like that? Hold then again, if Albert just rushed him like Ryuan did and just forced him down with his weight, I think it might have been a different story. Albert wanted to box. And if you're like, I'm not going to say I have any fighting experience. I don't. I've never fought anyone in my fucking life. I just used to run away. That's I, my, my motto is don't let the fight even happen in the first to get the fuck out, right? Nothing good will come from that. But what I've seen from Street Fights clips, right, is usually the heavier person will just basically get on top of the smaller guy and just ground pound them. Whoever gets somebody on the ground first pretty much wins. If Albert employed that tactic onto Anokoji, I don't think...
the outcome might have been the same, or I, I don't know. Maybe it would have been different. Maybe Anna, of course, has countermeasures to that, but he can fight. He can fucking fight. This is all from the white room? The, 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 the worldly society that Anna, of course, dad has in mind involves around teaching the martial arts like this? Fucking sign me up. No, probably not. That's not worth sacrificing your entire childhood for that, but wow. What a fight scene. What a fight scene. The best part was... I don't even know what the best part is. There's so many good parts. The part where fucking Anna Kuji shows up and he's like, yeah, I'm, um... So, I, w w he showed up and Rin was like, do you understand the situation you're in? Do you know how... You, uh, what, what are you gonna do now? Just walk away? You think you're... You think you're like... <laughs> you, don't you think that you're in danger? And he's like, me? Me in danger? He's just like, let me just call 911. Yeah, ambulance? Um, I need one, two, three, and four ambulances here in about 10 minutes. Thank you. To imply that it's not fucking for him, it's for them. They're all getting knocked the fuck out. Holy shit. I, the way he made quick work of Albert, to, to me, Albert has been always like the symbol of like indomitable strength. Like because Ryun has Albert around, no one will be able to compete against them in terms of violence. I know that Ryuan sometimes goes around like smacking people's head down and you know pushing dust and like hey, we saw what he did to Manabe, but but I thought that Albert was the one that was kind of establishing that violence and I kind of theorized well maybe if like Albert's being bought by Ryuan, assuming that they have no like personal backstory together and Albert's basically serving Ryuan because he has a deal to get mad points or something maybe we could pay off Albert and suddenly Albert would be on our side and then maybe Albert would fuck Ryuan up I think I thought that scenario might be funny but no. Anakuji himself does it. He just does it himself. He's so fucking fast with his hands. Just, just made such quick work of Albert and the other guy. Ibuki, <laughs> right on the fucking neck. Just classic karate chop on the neck. I don't know what kind of martial arts this is, but it's a. I'm not gonna fucking bother knowing what the martial arts the style this is. Maybe they'll explain it. In the, maybe they probably did explain it in the light novel, right? At, at first glance, everybody got wiped. But the moment that Ryuan and Aonokoji got in like uh, contact, right? They started like holding hands. <laughs> in, in, in the most least yaoi way possible. They started holding hands, right? During the fight. And Aonokoji was like, oh, a little bit different. Because then he explains like, oh, he must have had gathered his own like custom way of fighting after his time in the streets, right? Not a single time did he land any hits on Aonokoji. I feel like even when we were against the wall, right? He just kept attacking us, but Aonokuchi just deflected everything. I, I, I swear to God, like all the knees, all the hits, did he land a single hit on him? I don't think he did. God, God damn. God, God damn. God damn. And he ends it with just getting on top of him and it's just like 50 consecutive fists to the face until Ryuin would start feeling fear. The way that he was talking until the very end where he made that painful looking face. Like he said that I'm going to win. Even if you beat me right now, it doesn't matter. I'm going to come back and I'm going to bite you. And then I'm going to be the winner. I'm going to be the winner. So I want to see the face that you're making. I don't go just like. You know, this is a um, pretty just casual Wednesday night for me. And I'm just like, okay, this. Nothing. Did he really not feel anything though? I don't know you really didn't feel anything in this. Not a sense of happiness or pleasure being superior to Ryuan right now. Nothing. He just, just business as usual. Have to save K so that she'll be a good pawn to me. Oh, I've got some fucking goons here. I gotta take care of. All right, sure. Nothing, nothing personal. Just, just, just business. Really? Really? I mean, I want to believe that there's a, there's like an inner Anakuchi where the feelings have been locked away and he's, you know, because of his childhood in the white room and everything, he has to, he's been basically form to act this way but part of me wishes that there is you know that human side that's kind of locked away subconscious away but maybe it's just me reading too deep into things maybe he just doesn't really give a shit maybe he doesn't give a fuck at all the cold look he gives to Ryu and as Ryu and just makes the face of despair man revenge feels fucking good huh Ryu has been talking all that shit for fucking two seasons now he's been doing some very, very ah, evil. He's the antagonist, right? Torturing K. Manabi thing was pretty much funny to me. I, 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 I feel bad for the girl, but you know what she did to K, so that, that kind of gets a pass, even though it shouldn't. But like, he's done a very horrific thing. He's getting the justice deserved onto him right now. I don't think I hate Rewin. I think that he's a very compelling villain. I like him as a character actually a lot. 
But thinking for the future, what he said was, I'll make you fear me to the point you will never be able to oppose me ever again. Ryun was talking pretty good until the end, until he started making that face. Do you think that now we've, you know, beaten fear into him? Will he ever be able to talk back to us? Maybe not. Have we domesticated Ryuan like this? Have we? Was this all really part of his Aonokuchi's plan? Did he? To, to a certain degree, I feel like this might have been off the calculations. Him, him getting K in danger like this. I feel like he let... Because like in the previous episode after he met with his dad and after the, con the confrontation with the teacher saying that you lied to me. He said he was walking away from everything. Yet he came back and of course to say, he's got to look good, right? So he's saying, everything for here right now, I made you think that you're in control while I was in control the entire time. This, you think that you're being such a fucking mastermind right now, playing with all these pl players? No, I still got the fucking puppet string just like orchestrating all of you. So, he really just faked his own retirement to, to fool us? Or is there something more to that? Did he really come back for K? And he's like, well, fuck. I might as well get back in it. Now his mastermind identity is, you know, it's it's exposed. And I said in the beginning, and interesting, I thought that to Ayanokoji, like his identity being hidden and his freedom at the school to operate independently without any threat of being expelled was the most important thing. Even more important than K's livelihood. Clearly not. We saved her. Got up. He was acting like a real, you know, main protagonist right there. Like a main character. Puts his jacket on her. Don't worry, girl. I got you. I got you. Don't worry. And remember, one thing I'll never break. I will always come save you. And then she starts crying in his, in, in his arms. And he's like... And then there's a scene where... Have you seen Death Note? Where, Kira, where Light Yagami is hugging Misa Misa. And she's like, Light, you're back! And Kira's like, yes. And he's like... <laughs> all according to plan, right? All according to Keika. Is this really just all an act for him to get K more invested into? I, I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is this fucking fight. This fight scene is fucking sick. Amazing episode. Ten out of ten? Yeah, I'll give it. I, I mean, what am I gonna? It's a top tier episode. Fantastic. This is this isn't the finale though, right? We got one more episode, right? I can't just end so abruptly right now. But man, is this this? If this is already ended a reunion arc for us. Maybe he comes back as like a supporting player for Anna Kuchina, nah, right? I'm gonna beat you up if you don't, you know, do what I say. So maybe <laughs> this is uh this relationship is gonna continue. I don't really know, but hey, if you stick around this long, if you enjoy my reaction, you already know what I'm gonna say. Check out the other videos and playlists to my channel if you watch another video immediately after this one. It helps you to like push up my small channel to be recommended so that I have a chance to compete with some of your favorite reactors. Until next time, guys. Take care.